Wait, don't turn the channel. You've tuned into High Gravity. The show where we talk about beer, brewing, and whatever else. Where the only thing we take seriously is the next round. So grab a glass, fill it with something cold, and enjoy the show. Talk this one. Yeah. Actually, I'm going to do this like I used to do the show. Yeah. All oh, right. Stu, we're started. So, welcome, everyone. Welcome. So today we're doing mead. Johnny's we're doing again. a honey episode. That's right. Which is mead. Honey and, wine. And others. Yes. <laughs> and honey, yes. Whenever, whenever people ask me about, like, what's mead? I'm always, it's, it's Mead is honey. this. So, oh, oh God. Damn, that was depressing as oh, shit. He's <laughs> opening the cork and didn't pop. Mead is just honey wine. I always tell people it's, it's as basic as honey, water, and yeast. That, yeah, that yeah. is a mead. And it's the oldest known alcoholic beverage. That's right. That's, That's in debate by the winos, but I'll, I'll agree with you because I prefer mead. So, Let's see if I can get this to... Honey honey wine. Oh, there, there we go. go. There, there we go. go. There we Opa. go. I'm good at faking it. There God, we... didn't come out right. <laughs> we did have to give our glasses a very... That's nice. We had to give our yes. glasses a very hearty rinse with the star sink because the uh, the Dark Lord we were drinking previously <coughs> just sticks to the glass. So if you listen to the last uh, episode, you will you will know that like we drank some some heavy heavy stuff. But that way, so everyone knows how these episodes go. We normally do two and three back to back. Yes. Yeah. So by the second or the third one, like we're on now. Yes. <laughs> that's when the shit really starts coming out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We've we've imbibed in the high gravity, so the, the second or third episodes are always going to be more cheeky. Yeah. Or maybe not. Maybe we just all get a little drunk and a little somber, <laughs> and we start singing sad songs. We'll get there. That's tomorrow. So this, uh, tell us about this mead, Johnny, so before is, we get into So this is Shram's here. mead, and in all fairness, I probably should have looked up some more and about his Shram's, meadery. Shram's is fantastic. They, yeah, it's Michigan-based. One of the yep. best, if not the best, uh, meaderies in the state. Um, if if you're looking to get into brewing, I, so when I first started, um, Ken Shram, who, as far as I know, owns this, <clears throat> excuse me, meadery. He do. Um, he writes a book, I, I believe it's called Modern Mead Making, a Reddish Cover. Uh, if you're looking to get into making mead or just brewing in general, 100% required reading. Yes, absolutely. So it, he, it's very good information. It in that I have used that book and applied it to making everything that I have brewed to date. Uh, he gets into the science behind yeast, its life cycles, how it works, making mead, like the equipment sterilization, different ways that you can make it, and the best part, there's a whole bunch of recipes in the book. Um, this is not a mead I've made, but every mead that I have made is based on one of his recipes. And this mead is? Uh, so this is the ginger. Um, so a lot of people ask, what is mead? Uh, so this one, it's a honey wine is kind of a easier generalized descriptor for mead. Mm -hmm. um, it is technically its own category. It's not a beer, it's not a wine, it's not a liquor. Mead, mead is, a mead. is yes. mead. Yep. So what the difference is, is what goes into your wort. Um, in this case, like you said, honey water and yeast and that's generally it sometimes people will put like a uh, like sodium uh or what is it sodium metabisulfite whatever that is mm -hmm. stabilizer just something so you don't get some wild fermentation i don't actually use that in mine i'll well, use and some sometimes if you're not if you're not going to boil it like if you're yes. just going to fresh pitch like you, yep that's what you, i do you have to uh the, the honey itself is uh it's going to kill the yeast. Yeah. It's, you know, antimicrobial, antibacterial, and See, I, I can get into a lot of that later. Oh, yeah. I've done it. I've done it without. I've done it with. If it's um, raw honey, <clears throat> I should say. Yes. Raw, yeah. I know, use raw, unfiltered, honey. unpasteurized, all that. Oh, one of the times I, I bought honey from a local place, it had a dead bee in it. <laughs> yeah. Well, we can uh, we can get more into the the local honey production. That's yeah. a passion of mine. But oh, let's, yeah, let's... I know some local company that does. But now it. meat is good. higher percentage too on ABV. Typically, yeah. So yeah. This it's, one... it's wine. It's more like wine. Yeah. yeah. This one's a fourteen percent. Uh, this one is fermented with ginger. And you should you you should see the bottle. Like even though he's poured it, like the oh, bottle, yeah. the color has stained the inside of the bottle, and the, oh, yeah. the, the clear bottle has so got this amber. This is one of those uh, those discount ones I was talking about a few episodes ago. Mm -hmm. So this bottle was originally clearanced out to seventeen ninety nine, Which is actually very inexpensive for, for this bottle for that in size, general. Yeah. It's, it, they're normally like 30 or 35 bucks. I paid a dollar for it. So we're going to see I bought everything a dollar. I had. Uh, so before I do that, I'm going to read his description real quick, because I didn't realize it's on here. Shram's Mead prided itself in producing meads made with only the highest quality ingredients. Signature mead is flavored with pure grated ginger root and honey. Uh, this mead balances sweetness and acidity with an intense and lingering ginger flavor. Yeah, it is. 
That's a true gem on its own or paired with pan Asian cuisines, including Thai and Indian. I could see this going really good with like, oh, yeah. just based on the, but now the description. I'm curious, ginger takes over very easily. So if oh, you use my. too much and oh, the yeah. smell of it, I'll tell you what, it's, I've gotten it's the smell. It's without a doubt in the nose. Yeah. The smell is heavy ginger. Um, I, I can I would say I smell the age of the ginger. Yeah. It's got almost like a woody note to it in the kind of aroma. I, I would almost describe this as Verner's with honey. I kind of smell like the no alcohol fine. in it too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Like it's it's up there. Mm. It's got a it's got a smell I wouldn't describe as pleasant, but I'm not really a big ginger See, guy. I, li- I like ginger. I, I, nice. I love this. Yeah. I so th- I think that's what it is. For I, me, is I'm not so a big I have uh, fan. this is a 375 mil bottle. I've got the 750 bottles. You brought uh, the wrong one then. Well, I didn't know if everyone <laughs> would like it or not. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna based on the smell. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say no for me, but I, yeah. I haven't tasted it yet. So are we ready to give her a sip? Okay. Oh, I'm like halfway through my bottle. Oh, I, see, well, shit, I, I, miss, I missed out. Let me, let yeah, me give it a taste is, here. Yeah, this is a virgin Let's experience. get first impressions. I, I don't, I don't, I don't hate that. <laughs> so normally meat is extremely sweet. Very. Yes, it yes. doesn't have the overpower sweetness to it. No, no. you still get honey flavor. Yeah. I, I can taste the honey in it. The ginger and... Maybe it's aged out a little bit, but it's very smooth. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not very bitey. smooth into it. It's not bitey. A lot of times, ginger that's got that really sharp bite, you know, yeah. that kind of like lemony kind of bite, you know, like a lemon has. Yeah. But ginger, it's got that like sinus opening oils yes. that are in there, and this doesn't have it that. Settles kind of my like, stomach issues. It's phenomenal. I feel great after well, drinking. I, fermented drink ginger is like great this for is, the gut. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't. It doesn't make your sinuses burn like a nice fresh the, ginger will. So I, the first time I went to the that clearance bottle thing at that place that I'm not gonna name and I'm not telling you because you're gonna give it away. I won't give it away <laughs> now. I want this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I so I did actually the second drink. I do get a little bit of that kind of like just the tiniest bit of that little kind of uh, ginger burn in the yeah. back of the throat. In the back yeah. of the throat. Yeah, yeah. yeah. which I, I kind of I like that part of oh, ginger. Yeah. Yes, in, in, in <laughs> the back of the throat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Back in the throat, just like my wife likes. <laughs> <laughs> my wife. We misinterpreted that hate joke for that now. <laughs> Only if she listens. Don't pretend you get past the gums. We all know. <laughs> I'm not allowed to talk about this. <laughs> anyway, I'll just shut up. He's, he's under so, NDA, non-dick agreement. <laughs> so, Ouch. anyways, I, I. <laughs> that's not what she said. That's not what she did. Never mind. <laughs> Anyone else? Sheets anyways, warm? Moving anyways, on. anyways, anyways. So this was one of the the first cases of uh, mead and beer that I bought that night at that particular location, and I I cracked this open before any of the beers or anything. I almost went back that night to buy more, but the next night I bought all of it. So like when, all when the ginger. You, when you drank it fresh, how would you compare the flavor to now? Well, I mean, it, it's about this. I bought this like last year or the year before. Okay, so <laughs> so it hasn't evolved much since then. No, no, not at all. Okay, no. Okay. So I was just mead, wondering if maybe the ginger typically, was more sharp. Or... I I don't know actually how old most of what I bought that <laughs> those couple days is. Tastes fine to me. Um, I mean, the bottle's clearly stained a bit, as we discussed there. It's a so, clear well, bottle for those who can't see it. It's got some age to it because yes. it's smooth. Even with the ginger, it's really smooth. And mead generally hits its peak drinkability about five years. So I'd say it's probably at least that, if not a little bit more. So it's probably yeah, yeah, it's ne- probably whenever, fallen off a whenever bit. Whenever I make mead, it's not something like I, I keg all my beers, but like yeah. mead is something I bottle because like it's you want it to sit for six or seven months. You need like, sitting yeah. there, you I know? I have one uh, carboy of it in my kitchen. It's probably going on two years in that, and yeah. I've only racked it once. I need to do it at least one more time. To get some more of that sediment out, you know, and I suppose but it's phenomenal. You could do like, say, like a lower gravity sweetened mead that you could keg and yeah, you know serve, no, but, and higher, it wouldn't higher. need to. I agree, I agree. But if you don't want it to have to sit for six months on a bottle, because it's it's one of those things that's like I like so to make it for Christmas presents. So the, like you the make biggest it thing like, with the mead, though, and, and with a lot of wines, is you need that aging process. Yeah. So just aside from the fermentation, a lot of it just kind of takes time to meld those flavors together mellow out to to mature it's like making chili or red sauce like exactly it's better out of the fridge the next day once the flavors are solidified so i always call it farm chili so growing up my grandparents lived in a farm quite literally over the river and through the woods to my grandparents house and we were there every weekend in the summer all throughout the week and we had what we called farm chili so it it was never the same it was never predictable other than it's going to be good Mm -hmm. And we all fought for that last bowl. 
Because throughout the week it would change, and you know, grandma would add some, you know, just some carrots here or something. And that's a my, couple my days gra- later. My it's grandfather down. used to yeah. he used to save the uh, the bones to whatever meat he made, pork or yep. beef or chicken. And then when he made his red sauce, he'd throw in whatever bones he had in the freezer to yeah. flavor the sauce. And it was always developing, and it changed throughout the week. One day it might be a little too spicy. The next day it might be a little too soft. But a couple days later, oh my god. And just any of that, the more it sits and develops, the better it gets. Yep. And I think I think booze, you know, beer, mead, wine, et cetera, like it's just a lot slower scale. Yeah. yeah. And it, it's interesting depending on the container it's put in, you know, like the, the opacity of the bottle or oh, whether yeah. you're aging it in a carboy or you're aging it in a barrel. And we talked briefly on that one of our last episodes. Yeah, how the, beer skunks and yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's like I I've had bad Corona right from the store. Yeah, but well, every now and bottle, then, yeah, yeah, it's, it's gonna skunk if they've got. Lights and every on now it, and yeah. then, you get one of those fresh bottles. It's like this doesn't taste like Corona. This is amazing. That's why I, I like a, when I drink a green green bottle of beer. I kind yeah. of expect a little bit that skunk, and I I rather enjoy it honestly. Yeah. like I'd like this. Carlsberg this one shouldn't be. So I, I have another. Another yeah, treat. We've that got I a homebrew bottle here in a, uh, I think in this a might... Grolsch bottle, which, you know, the, yes. for those that know, the Grolsch swing top. I yes. love the swing top. That's satisfying when the you open ultimate it. in laziness for the homebrew that doesn't want to step yep. up to kegging. <laughs> when, when we first started bottling, and I, I think I told this story before, we, we wanted to do our first batch. We found the cheapest pop top yeah. because you can't do a twist top, which was Newcastle. And yep. those were in clear <laughs> bottles. And at the time, we were playing a lot of ping pong in my garage. So we would drink, you know, we'd get two or three cases of Newcastle, and me and all the boys would drink as many Newcastles as we could. Because, hey, we got 10 gallons to bottle up. Like, we got to we gotta drink, like, you know, yeah. 80 bottles of Newcastle or whatever. I, I always did the math, figured out how many bottles I need plus a few extra. So I was just buying the big packs of Sam Adams. Yeah. Well, once I once I discovered Grolsch, I didn't. Uh, yeah. a, a friend of mine, he's uh, from Bulgaria. Um, he came over from a village in Bulgaria and introduced me to Grolsch. And there's a, a bar in Detroit that had the the big swing top bottles. Yeah. And we would go there all the time and drink Grolsch together. And I, I absolutely love it. And so when I when I see an opportunity to drink Grolsch, I, yeah. I always order a bottle and of these, Grolsch. And these in particular, and the unfortunate truth about Grolsch bottles, at least in our area, not a lot of people like it and drink it. Which is Which surprising means, to me, but, yeah. Because if if you like like say Heineken or Bex, like yeah. Grolsch is a is a better version. Yeah, I think that they're comparable in taste, but it's just better. It's cleaner. It's yeah. crisper. It's just so a the nicer problem drink. is they sit, and, and I've had a lot too. of skunked Grolsch. I, well, that's it's kind of skunky to begin with. I think little that's bit, kind of and that, that was like the the comparison I just made of Corona. I first experienced that with Grolsch. Some mm. old ones, and then it was like Kroger started carrying it, and I bought one, and it was well, and so much better. A lot of distributors don't like to carry them, like, yeah. because like uh, I had a friend who is a delivery driver, and he he hated anywhere that ordered a lot of forties because they're so heavy. Yeah, and Grosch bottles are like bulletproof. They're in four they're packs, thick. They're heavy, and that's those cases are. That's super one thing heavy. I'll say for home brewers, and your your market may vary, and I'm 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 cheap. <laughs> I do not like the Easy Cat bottles because it seems to be thinner glass. The Grosch bottles, hell, I've dropped these and they don't break. Yeah, they're, they're bulletproof. You know, Which like, is why it's it like was... anyone who's had a can of Sapporo, like yeah. the, the big oh can. Oh my God. Like you try yeah. to squeeze it and the thing's like, oh, this is made out of like aircraft You try to crush that shit. on your head, you're just, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> so no. I think we should have had your mead first mm. because I, I drink a lot of mead and I'm not a fan of mead because normally mm. it's way too sweet. But I'm pretty sure this. This uh, Schramm's here ginger mead is one of my favorites I've ever had. <laughs> well, I think like I've been quiet. I'm just sipping over here, just keep thinking about it. Like, as far good. as mead goes, I, I really feel like a lot of places uh, add honey afterwards. They back sweeten yeah, their mead just to get it off. So, yeah, I, and, I, and have I like a... dry. I'm, I, I like a dry mead with just a touch of honey. I don't want it to be sweet necessarily, I'll, but I want it to the, taste this like ginger honey. Has that spice yeah, in it? It does. That sits on the. The so I there. have, um, there's a that. medium show mead and a sweet show mead that were recipes from his book that I have. I'll dig through my, my back stock collection, but I have more homebrews following his recipes I can bring in. So you can see that so real variation. This shows he's in Ferndale. Does he have a place you can go to? I believe there is like a, a, a tap room or something. I think I, I actually place. don't know about that. I don't I've, either. I've only I don't know for sure, but I, I thought there was. Yeah. We could Google. I, I could text I didn't even realize he would tell us. I didn't even realize this was Shrams until like two weeks after. Uh, my, <laughs> my brewing and mentor I've got... introduced me to Shrams. And yeah. it's, it's always like whenever really we have good. Shrams oh, meetings yeah. at the bottle shares, like uh, Keith brought um, some... Uh, raspberry shrams and uh, and a boysenberry shrams and they were just 
absolutely ridiculous. They were I have so a good. cherry, a nutmeg, and one or two other ones. I think of is. Man, and they're they're phenomenal. The ginger does stick on your palate. Oh when yeah. I, when I breathe out, <clears throat> I get that ginger. Yeah. This would be if you had a cold. This would be amazing to drink, or even That's warm. That's why I bought everything. <laughs> even warm. If you warmed this up, <clears throat> yeah, or even mixed it with a tea, put it in tea, like so a warm tea, this would be I had phenomenal. A, I had a half bottle of ginger and a half bottle of the nutmeg of, of that, and I blended them together. Oh. Yeah, I, I could see this being one of those situations, oh. like you got a sore throat, yeah. and like it's just really We're talking good. about the Grolsch bottles. Uh, so yeah, so one thing I will say... You got to be careful not to overcarbonate because if you turn a Grolsch bottle into uh, bottle grenades, yeah, yeah. that is some scary it's shit. It's a bad So, time. how are you carbonating now, these? So, these, uh, this one, well, this one didn't actually carbonate, unfortunately. It, <laughs> I left it in secondary a little too long and it, it kind of killed everything. Uh, but generally, I just do the in bottle carbonation. So, uh, predominantly, what I do, and I'm the odd man out at this table, I know that. Um, I do a lot of the extract beer kits, just I don't have the room for all the equipment. No, it's so some, it, there's there's nothing wrong with that. I I've read lots of studies that even extract kits are indiscernible from all grain. I'll give all more grain, credit to the cheaper. all grain stuff though. It's, it's more effort. Yeah, you, you have to understand. What and you're doing. extracts I, have won competitions yeah. against all grains. Yes, and all grain but I, is cheaper. I think oh, that's without the reason, a doubt. Yeah, I I look into goes. anything like like cooking and grilling. We we've talked a bit about that. I give anything to the more artistic side of things. So to the all grain guys, I tip my hat to all of you. I have not yet had a chance. I've done it like with the specialty greens and steeping those, but I have not personally done an all grain brew yet. Uh, but when I do it, uh, I'm not even gonna lie. I straight up just use the priming sugar that comes in the kit. <laughs> and so, that's, that's, oh, let's see if she says she doesn't. Even see she's us. not gonna look at me. Deb. Okay. So Deb just walked by. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I, of, didn't say hi to us. One of How our members here. That's yeah. what I hate <laughs> about bottling was. <clears throat> Getting the sugars just right for yeah. a proper carbonation. That's why I cheat with the kit. <laughs> you you never it's it's so hard to tell like yeah you can yeah. you can measure and you can understand you can get it but like how active is your yeast in the bottle? Yeah, you know, like right. the the root beer story. I, I, did I tell the full root beer story on one of you? I you're asking me. Was it alcoholic root beer? Um, well, let's, I'll I tell mean, you what, kind of. Let's let's. let's uh, we'll save that for another episode. I would say we can. I was going to say let's finish these drinks yeah. and get into your uh, your, one, yes. your homebrew there, so we can. Uh, make so sure we got to we, kill this bottle first. I'll, well, here y'all can I, split that. I didn't. Uh, yeah, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, I didn't get a I refill. I got an extra pour, so because <laughs> I, I, I didn't think I was going to like it. So, <laughs> um, and I, and again, I I don't think that I would go out of my way to buy this bottle if it was at the store because I know that Shrams <laughs> has so many offerings. For one dollar, you wouldn't. But for oh for a dollar, no, absolutely. Like if if it was a dollar, I'd buy everyone. I'd buy the whole store out. Yeah, I'd buy one. That's what I did. I'd I'd give them away as gifts if nothing else. When when I realized that these were all meat, like I thought they were beer, so I was grabbing one of everything I saw. Like straight up, I grabbed one of everything I saw. Got home, realized two thirds, three quarters of what I just bought was meat. I went back the next day and I bought everything. Yeah, I I don't care if I liked it or not. I yeah, I've I've been to bottle stores before where they're like. These you know dust covered I have six year old seven yeah. bottles. They're they're like, oh, I'll give you a deal if you want them. And I'm like, well, wh- what kind of deal stuff. would you give yeah. me if I buy all of them? Yeah. And then you just buy them. If, if they're crap, it's like, oh, I only spent two or three dollars on mm-hmm. each one of these bottles. And like, if nothing else, like you can use it for cooking, use it yeah. for something. Like, you know, yeah. the imperial stouts that I bought that like, oh, this is crap. Like, hey, I'll make a pot roast out of imperial stout. That's <laughs> yeah. just fucking good. So I will say, in Ferndale, I've been to Bee Nectar before. I have not and, been, yep, but I've wanted to Episode 13, they're barrel-aged, amazing. I yeah, love that Caitlin one. loves their uh, We should try to find that for our 13th episode. Yes, but yeah, I love it. Their Necronomicon. But I love it. Yeah. Shrams has, has a location in Ferndale that you can go drink at. Sweet. So I know that's going to be my next location to go Excellent. stop at now. Excellent. Well, maybe one of these Looks days really we can nice be fortunate too. enough to uh, do our podcast to other breweries and, you know, highlight them or do maybe I'd some, some, do some yeah. live cast. It'd be fun to do like a live cast from like different breweries and just oh, yeah. like showcase their beers. And we'll definitely sure. have to have someone drive us, though. Yes. The great thing is uh, I married a great DD who doesn't drink. You got so one of them youngins who can drive. I have a 17 year old. We're good. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. All yeah. set. <laughs> Was she that upset with you the other night when she picked you up from the bar? No. Oh. <laughs> she just happens to drive. I don't, I, I don't know if anybody heard, but you're leaving. I, I yelled, I'm sorry we kept him out so late. <laughs> well, my, I remember Monday night, uh, yeah. she was bringing you back from karaoke. <clears throat> now you're making me sound like an extreme hobbyist. Well, <laughs> hey, we you don't go to the, meetings. You were at I mean, this the is a meeting <laughs> that you own, and we were all having a great time. I think a lot of people went next door to Commercial House to have yes. uh, drinks afterwards, but I, I had to drive to Detroit on Tuesday, and fortunately now, 
as of uh, this week, I, I go Wednesday, Thursdays. So nice. uh, Monday night karaoke's I get to enjoy yes, myself. Excellent. Monday, excellent. that's when we went there. Yes. yes. Yep. Yes. That's my daughter had to come get me. <laughs> it's a blessing. Only because but, she had the vehicle, not for but, any other reason. <laughs> No, there was other reasons, for well. sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm yeah, trying to make you not sound like that much of an enthusiast. She, Come on. she got to drive the uh, Dodge truck that we just got, so she's nice. so happy. Very nice. I got to I gotta say, this mead, I feel like it, like, I don't know if it's the ginger or what it is, but it, I feel like it, like... Feel the, good? The, the alcohol <laughs> just, like, goes into effect now. Uh-huh. <laughs> like, you can feel it in your sinuses, like, it's no, like you, you absorb have a it. You got that nice spice yep. on that back. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah. The alcohol right, vapors went good. Let's what you had. All right, so I'm 90% certain and this is... Do you want me to rinse the glasses first? Because that ginger is a really oh, yeah, strong smell great. or a really hey. strong taste. Here, let me go out. I'm going to rinse with we'll my water because I am not going to waste this beautiful, beautiful stuff. Well, that ginger actually carried through the water runs too. <laughs> yeah, I believe that. <laughs> yeah. But it wasn't overpowering. It just no, smooth. it's it's really a good, good. Really mellow good. kind of flavor. Like I said, I, I call it like Verner's with, with honey. And like anytime, you know, like I said, if I've, I've got a cold or I'm feeling like crap, I'll I'll drink some of that and it's fantastic. I love it. All right, so this one, I'm gonna wait till you sit down there. I'm so this came from my fridge. I am like ninety percent certain this is a braggot. I, I'll know in a minute here. The sound of oh, the, yeah. the Grosch hinge, yeah. unhinging. I so, st- I still have wait. I still have a trace so what of flavor dark is this again? Glass. So this I'm gonna I'll pass it around to you guys because I don't want to pour too much near the computer. <clears throat> so this is a braggot. This is something they discussed in the book. Um, oops, someone's doing something back there. Getting hammered. Um, so I'm sorry this one doesn't Hammer have the fire. clarity. I When secondary fermentation, it settled a bit too much. And when I realized how old it was, I, I had to bottle it. I got to so, say, beer clarity little... is probably my least concern when it comes to like styling hey, wait guidelines. Wait till you get to the bottom. <laughs> so what Braggot is, so Braggot is essentially a beer mead hybrid. Um, so as we've clearly discussed in the show title, I like higher alcohol beverages. Uh, <clears throat> this, High gravity. <laughs> so I like Belgian triples. So I took a Belgian triple kit that I bought from Cap and Cork. And then I, I'm trying to remember the exact ratio. I meant to grab my notes when I left home and forgot. But basically, I took about a third of the extract out and replaced a little more than that equivalent weight with honey. So that gives you kind of the honey backing. It has the honey smell to yep. it, for sure. And when that ferments out with the higher yeast tolerance, you get a lot of high alcohol, you get that honey taste, and you get the mead beer kind of hybrid. I kind of I like this better than the uh, the mead even. The, well, <laughs> the, the flavors, the, it's just such a juxtaposition without the ginger. There's a lot of the yeasty to it. I don't like that. I will part. say this has a lot, a lot of, of flavor to it though. Yeah, it does a lot of I get, flavor. I get chocolate like right across like the middle, like not up front, not on the back, but I get a, a little bit of chocolate. I can see that. Like it just. It dries out really quick too. Yes, yeah. <laughs> it's got like a really like a aftertaste kind of like you get from like a like a really good like amber or yeah. like a light brown like kind of like that caramely malty like the not quite sweet. Yeah, but Car- those... caramely not sweet. Yeah, yeah, I agree. With so that. The, the... it's round. It's I, I I heard I hate to say a round <laughs> flavor, but like I yeah. think people get it. Like it's it's smooth. There's two things I don't like about it that I'm not happy about. The yeasty kind of non settled being one of them. That's just mainly because of transportation towards the bottom of it. It's it's there very dominantly. Brewer's yeast is good for the gut. Oh yeah, I need to drink more then. <laughs> and constipation. Um, <laughs> the other, <laughs> the other thing I don't like, I I like everything carbonated, high heavy carbonation. Um, this didn't, and yeah, I was very carbonated. no, I was very disappointed in no. that, and that is completely on me because I let primary fermentation go like a couple weeks longer than it should have. I put it in secondary, and I forgot about it for like three four months. The, I'll be the honest, yeast just dies out on you. Oh, I completely. I'm not worried about it. the carbonation. I mean, it does pull little flavors out sometimes. Yeah, I just I like carbonated stuff. And I was very disappointed that it didn't. And I know we've discussed a few times yeah, that I could we discuss, open dump them up, it, dump force them in a it, keg. rebottle yeah. it. Yeah. I've got a bottle and gun. You know, the, I'm, shout I'm, out Blickman Bottling Gun, the best Blickman technology that ever existed. I love Blickman stuff, existed. man. Their, their Hellfire burner 
fucking awesome. I, I you know, I and I got mine that was based off the Hellfire, the mm-hmm. uh, the local brew store that used to be here, Adventures in Homebrewing. Now mm-hmm. they're based out of Texas. They were bought by uh, I think American Homebrewer or something like that. Yeah. And uh, they made their own like custom turkey burners. You know those like uh, turkey deep fryers, the jet burners. Yeah. yeah, and they they bumped it up to like 160,000 BTU Woo, from nice. like the 25,000 BTU that you normally get. And it, I've got a yeah. keggle, and it gets my keggle to boil in like 10 minutes. You know, yeah. even, even with like 11 gallons like, of liquid, and it's like now. I think this thing's like 140,000. I'd love to get one of those Edelman ones with all the nozzles you can focus and stuff, but that's like six hundred you know, bucks. I'm moving to all electric, two forty. Uh, you know, it, electric's it, the way to go. Yeah, it is. It is. But, yep. Yeah. I, I, I've been really more consistent on the heat. I've been really into uh, you can like set it claw and hammer, it. <laughs> like claw hammer supply. Like I've really been into yeah. their, their equipment. Uh, all you know, all American made, welded steel, everything yeah. like that, and. The uh, the two forty brings your boil up in you know eight to ten minutes instead of like the you know the standard like one ten or whatever yeah. you get like you know it's gonna be like a twenty five minute boil and and when you're a home brewer you know a lot of times when you you can't get motivated to dust the dust off of your equipment <laughs> is because of the time commitment oh yeah and that's what I think extract brewing really brings to the table oh yeah is uh my, my like a ha- couple hours start to finish you're done exactly yeah and my my half of Eisen that I make the honey Hefner which kind of leads into this here with the, the honey flavors. Um, I make a honey Hefeweizen that is has always been an extract brew. Like, I can do it all grain, but it's an extract brew because I turn it around super quick because it got drank super quick. It was, yeah. my, it was my lawnmower beer. Nice. You know, it's that, that 4.3%, you know, very, very high volume, so, like, super well carbonated. Mm-hmm. It's crisp. It's clean. It's sweet. It's dry because I will ferment with honey and brown sugar. So you get a little bit of that like brown, that kind of molassesy character, along with a little bit of that floral character from the honey, and and then you oh, take. Oh, I love you took that picture. Oh, he got it, yeah. Like fuck you, Daryl. <laughs> Daryl was taking selfies. It's like he's some kind of like millennial or something. Come on. And so and then when I would when I would keg the beer, I would uh, you know rack it and wash it over a sieve with some <clears> like <throat> crystallized honey, like because I always Ooh. have crystallized honey. Yeah. Just so that like the liquid would wash over those kind of honey crystals and melt it into the keg, so I'd I like always yeah. I would always put a, you know a couple of cups of honey into the keg. It's not enough to like make it sweet sweet, but it gives the kind of the floral honey nature gives it a little bit of that punch. I like that because yeah. with, with wheat beers and hefeweizens particularly, you get a, those kind of like wheat spices. You know the kind of like the warmer kind of nutmeggy, cinnamony, yeah. even bubblegummy, banana flavors. And honey really makes that punch through. It gives it yeah. that little bit of extra oomph that it needs. But I just love honey. Like I said, I, I wish it was same. more clear. And I know I could run it through like a filter to get rid of some of that. Don't filter it. No. No, I'm going to leave it. The only bottom, like I said, when we, I'll let you guys kill some more of this bottle and then I'll, I'll take the rest out. I think it, it's if, more on the bottom. I've done different clarifying experiments with, like, similarly with a Hefeweizen, like yeah. throwing some, you know, like flavorless gelatin in there. I to tried one of those. Out the proteins. Yeah, I tried one of those two. I, I never tried it the. It. Yeah, it ruined the Hefeweizen. The two part one, and this is what a lot of people got to be careful with. If you're going to use a clarifier, look at the ingredients that are go into it. Yeah, so, don't clarify a beer that's meant to be cloudy. Don't clarify it, a wheat beer. I'm even aside from that. Unless it, you want to. Whether you want to clarify something or not. Oh yeah. So the I talked to I don't remember if this was a bar conversation or a show conversation. A mead that I made for a wedding a few years back. I looked at getting a clear I had six months to plan it, buy the ingredients, brew it, and bottle it. It's fast for me, but six months. It was very you, fast. You can turn and it around. It's doable. It's not as good as it could be. That's bare minimum for Do something eight or nine percent, and it'll be a lot. Oh, more. I bummed it up, but I wanted it clear, and I looked. I ended up not using the clarifier because I bought it, and I was reading the ingredients in it, um, and I, I can't remember the name of it. But if it is, if it's something you're making for yourself, do whatever you want. Don't care. Dude, flavorless gelatin is the best clarifier. In my if opinion. it's something you're going to be sharing with people, you have to be aware of the ingredients in it. This particular one I had bought at the brew store was a shellfish base. So it it had like a, it used shellfish as something to help drop the stuff out of sediment, and um, it, it had shellfish in it. And when I contacted shellfish, the, yeah, because I know like gelatin that I use is is 
you know, derived from like animal bones. So like mm-hmm. vegetarians and vegans shouldn't have it. But even some vegans, like they view yeast as like a living organism. Yeah. And then like, you, well, you eat, you can't avoid yeast. It, mm-hmm. it exists on everything. I'm, I'm a vegan. Or Osmo veganism is a, a, a phrase uh, my yeah, buddy the, keeps. The things, the things I eat are vegans. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Therefore. <laughs> and I, I, have, I have no problem with people's dietary choices. Like one of my best friends is vegetarian and I've done vegetarian or vegan. And I, I see, I like cooking. So Same. Like for me, like I approached it from a, an interesting cooking challenge. Yeah. Like how can I use things and how can I make good food that is vegan or how can I make good food that's vegetarian? Oh, I don't and, do that. And well, like, if you're missing out, there's some amazing vegan vegetarian food. Oh, I believe it. Amazing. I've had some good stuff. I make, don't get me wrong. I make a phenomenal vegan chili. And, but I uh, like we, steak. We had a <laughs> and chicken. We had a camping I don't excursion like one time. A, a big group of us get together at the uh, what are called the Kevorkian cabins, <laughs> which for anyone from Michigan or else, they, they know who you know Kevorkian is. He assisted you know terminally ill or elderly people with assisted suicide, and it was illegal at the time. And I think in, in this state, it, I think it still is illegal. It's, yeah, but still is. <laughs> where he would where he would take them was these cabins in Bald Mountain, which is a uh, like a metro park or a state park or whatever. Like Bald in Mountain, Michigan. like Bald like Mountain an hour Kibble. from here, Bald Mountain. Yes, that's the exact oh, same one. Yeah, we I didn't and know. we was that close. Me and my friends have stayed. We'd rent two of the cabins: the Morel cabin, and I can't remember what the other one is because there's lots of wild mushrooms there. So that's another reason we go. Um, it's and better when it we'd, up, we'd rent these cabins and uh, one of the like we'd always everyone was responsible for bringing kind of like a dish to make. And we had this big, like, giant cast iron kind of, uh, like, vessel to cook in. And someone's we'll like, Talk hey. more about that after. Someone's like, hey, who's, who's the vegetarian? We need vegetarian. So I used my garden and harvested everything from my garden to make vegan chili. Hmm. So, you know, carrots, spinach. The only thing I didn't harvest was the beans and the quinoa because it had, you know, kidney beans, yeah. uh, black beans, quinoa. And I don't, I don't grow quinoa or beans. They're just too inexpensive to buy. Yeah. But it turned out really good. Took a lot of habaneros and jalapenos from hmm. my garden and made this, like, big pot of spicy Apparently chili. Apparently there's some construction going on in the back. <laughs> yeah, Star, StarCraft is uh, expanding, I guess you could say. So, you know, I'm hopefully... I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, hopefully sometime in the future there'll be, there'll be more room here. Yes, yes. But I, I, would, we'll I, would love to, I would love to segue, since we're drinking honey-based beverages in this episode. All right. You scrubs-wearing savior. This one's for you. The nurse who's seen more veins than a junkie in an alley. You're out there, threading the needle between life and death, turning sickness into health while life tries to flatline your fun. So grab that frosty pint of medicinal malt, guzzle it down like a patient downs their pills, and face the day with the audacity of a nurse who's fresh out of fucks to give. You've got empathy, endurance, and the most reviving brew within arm's reach. Here's to you. The healthcare hero turning life's pain into palpable relief. Now, let's get back to it and inoculate this day into submission. The only pressures we want to check are the ones in our beer kegs. So bottoms up, you bandage brigadier. Let's show this day how we nurse our way to victory. You know, maybe a little bit of self-promotion here, if you will. For those that don't already know or those who haven't heard, you know, me mention it before. Um, I'm a commercial beekeeper. I have uh, me and my business partner, uh, John, keep, you know, a lot of bees. Wait, how does he spell his name? I, yeah, you, you've gone over this before. He, <laughs> he, the only right way to spend Jonathan is his name. Oh, like, you know, okay. So, use points, buddy. Use and points. And, you know, maybe, maybe I'm a jerk because I really should ask him, do you prefer Jonathan or John? I just always call him John because it's easier for me. But we, we started a uh, commercial beekeeping company this year. I've been I've been a beekeeper for about seven years, and uh, this is the first year we started taking it to a commercial level. And uh, we're named Southern Roots Apiary, and uh, we focus on honey and honey-related products. Uh, our most popular being our hot honeys. Um, and it's it's good. I got to be careful with spicy stuff, but their hot honey is phenomenal. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm pretty proud of it. Um, my I've got two different varieties we sell now, and we're kind of expanding. But one is uh done with like freeze-dried habanero so it's like got that nice habanero punch and that that variety is very sweet then heat like you get the sweet and kind of a little bit of like the tart from the the cider vinegar and then you get like that habanero punch where it's a real fast come up and a real kind of like slow come down and then we've got the hell honey which is uh the same recipe uh but instead of habanero powder i use a little bit of uh like dried uh, smoked paprika and fresh apocalypse scorpion peppers i've not tried that one yet so is that the one you brought me 
That's the one in the jar that I got you. Yeah, that's the Hell Hunter. That was so good. It's, it smelled amazing. hot. Amazing. <laughs> it's, and you, you believe it or not, like people, when they hear Apocalypse Scorpion, they think, oh my God, the honey must be so hot. And it, it's not. And the honey, like, the honey kind of overpowers it and tones it down. Yes, it up that's a little the amazing bit. thing. Even the it's, regular hot honey was like and really good and enjoyable. The best part about the Hell Honey for me is because it's used fresh peppers. Like you get that fresh pepper taste and smell nice. and the come up just based on the type of pepper like being the hottest thing i've ever eaten i you know daryl and i i like to bring up all of my super hots and daryl and i will eat them <laughs> because he's the only person i know who wants to sit down and like yeah i'll eat 15 super hot peppers like that's fine with me and you must hate yourself the next I just, morning I just get off on that pain <laughs> so, you know, exactly but i fucked you about brother it's, it's just like it's smoking that's ed, a whole different podcast smoking ed curry the man who invented the uh the carolina reaper and now the world record uh, pepper X. Oh yeah, at, we at talked about 3. that. Three point six nine million or two point six nine million Scoville units. And so he used to be a former drug addict, and like he found that like he got a high from eating hot things. And you do mm. your body literally is reacting like you burned yourself with fire. And it's not the pain you experience is superficial. You didn't actually hurt yourself. But your body reacts in that way, so you get that adrenaline rush. And so there's a certain level of verbato to it, you know, too. Like, you know, where you know, there's a certain level of like, you know, I'm tougher than you because I can eat a two million scope of pepper and you can't. Like, that last pepper you brought in, what was that at? That's the apocalypse scorpion. They're, they should rank about two million. Because we were eating just the pepper alone. And it was the hottest pepper I've ever had. Good but Lord. what I also noticed. There was different too, sections of it too, though, I noticed. Exactly. Because sometimes That's I tasted what I was it and it wasn't real hot. Yep. The first See, I, bit I took was violent. And then the next three, <laughs> four, four bits. Crying, I like tears were pouring out of your yeah. face. The next three, four I, bits I took were fine. I left the full of spicy foods about the Carolina Reaper. Because I, I started to have, we'll just call it next morning. The issues scorpion and, and the reaper. Burns from, the same, the same level. There you go. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And so, like the, this, this hot honey, the hell honey, is is kind of a limited release because it, as long as I can be harvesting these peppers from my garden, I will make it. Yeah. Um, Maybe so. one day we'll, we'll do a tasting on it. I'm gonna warn y'all now, though. I get the hiccups really bad when I eat spicy stuff. Like it sounds like I'm gonna throw up. I don't. I never have. I hope I never do. But I gotta, it is hilarious. I gotta say, they're, both of them are not that spicy. That yeah. was what I was kind of trying to lead We're, into with the that pepper is crazy hot. But I use like five of them, maybe six of them, to make like a two dozen eight ounce bottles of hot honey. So like the amount of pepper that goes into it is so minimal. Relatively small. Yeah, yeah it's enough to get the flavor of the pepper and just enough of the heat. Nice. But when we do the eating peppers on the podcast, you have to bring a starburst. The Starburst, oh, by far, were my favorite. We're going to we're gonna have to wait till next new. I've got a pepper called Lemon Starburst. What is it? Four hundred thousand or two fifty or? Shout out to Kang Star. Um, you know, one of the the greatest pepper breeders of our time, in my opinion. Like the dude is just passionate about it. He created this. It's it's from two different peppers that he bred, but it's this little UFO looking pepper that is bright yellow. Mm. It was and so good. It's about habanero heat. So somewhere in about like the you know anywhere from like hundred to hundred and eighty thousand Scovilles. Huh. Um, the ones that we had uh, weren't weren't that spicy, but they have this wonderful super lemony floral almost a little these ones had a little bit of like bubble gum to nice. them like they were super good but i would i'd eat them all day well so for those interested in buying the honey the hot honey or the hell honey that's right where hell can they find the you to get it or where can they get dishes made with it or wh where can they find you how can they contact you to buy it well as of today um, which, you know, no one will be able to uh, see it today. But uh, the Commercial House uh, in Richmond has a brunch on Sundays. They will be using my hot honey on their uh, chicken and waffles. Um, we do a lot of local farmer's markets and things of that nature. But you can look up Southern Roots Apiary. Spell that for people because that is a weird spelling. <laughs> Southern Roots as in S-O-U-T-H. I just meant the Apiary <laughs> If you Which, can't spell Southern Roots, I mean, you know, I'm sorry. That's that's a fair approximation because next door, uh, they posted on their Facebook that they would be having Southern Roots Aviary, <laughs> which is where you keep birds. And I was like, that's a bird place. A <laughs> apiary, though, is A-P-I-A-R-Y. Apiary, being a place where you keep bees. Nice. <laughs> so our next stop is Commercial House. Yes, to try some of this. We are going right. here to have some spicy Cause, cause chicken. We've and had a lot of a lot of beverages. We need to balance that out with some <laughs> solids. <laughs> and more beverages. So, well, so I beverages. got a question for Mr. Daryl. You guys think about making meat anytime soon? Because that would be phenomenal. So we've, <laughs> we've been trying. Oh. And I failed miserably. What? 
Let's try. Last let's try times. some of that out, and we'll see how it goes. So we're, we're, we're straightening it out. Yes. Daryl's Daryl's brother here, Phil, who makes a lot of their wine. I actually he does keep, amazing with the wine. Really I have good. bees yes, at phenomenal. his house, nice. and he's been talking to me about making mead for a very long time. And I tried to go out there and pull the honey from his property yesterday. And I'll tell you, his property is very wet, mm. and my shoes are made of mesh. And uh, dumbass, you know, hey, <laughs> it was about dark. Well, we were coming back from a farmer's market, to be fair, but like, to be fair, it was to be fair, dark and cold, and the bees were not cooperating. So, uh, that's another mission for today to get Phil's honey, excellent, excellent. for some mead. That sounded wrong, but whatever. <laughs> I love Phil's honey, he loves yours too, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we should, we should probably call this a day because this is just devolving very quickly. Hopefully, oh. his wife's not listening to this. <laughs> I guarantee you she's not and won't. <laughs> good seeing y'all. We'll see you on the next one. Sounds good, buddy. See ya. Yo, you got it. I do. What am I saying? My name's like, Daryl. Stay see you frothy, my friends. I'm Daryl. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs> if you didn't learn anything today, at least remember this. Beer is the answer that makes everything better. Can't remember the question. But who cares when you have a cold one in your hand? Remember, everybody, drink responsibly, drink high gravity. Most importantly, drink well. <laughs> okay, not the well. Life's too short for bad beer. Stay, Stay frosty, frosty, my friends. friends.